I'm Chair of Charity Comms and uh, I'm currently working as a consultant after a 25 year career in communications in charities uh, and the commercial sector. My job today really is just to uh, set the scene and I hope it's going to be a fascinating day. As Vicky says, this really goes to the, the heart of what Charity Comms is about as an organisation and what we're all about um, as professionals in our industry. A, a few weeks ago, I wrote a blog for Charity Comms on the Charity Comms website. A few of you may have seen it. And I asked a, quite a simple question, really, which is, why is it that some organisations get it and others just don't? It's, it's a fairly basic question, but it's, it's just so true. You can see it when looking at the ways that different charities uh, communicate or don't communicate. It mystifies me. Is it about fear? Is it about lack of understanding? Is it about money? Probably about all of those. But everybody can see successful organisations communicating effectively internally and externally. So what's the problem? Is it about myths that we have to bust? Is it about mindset? What is it about? How do we get leaders, CEOs, financial directors, boards of trustees to change and to reach a new norm where communications is not seen as a luxury, where it is at the heart of delivering strategy, not some kind of gloss or embroidery on the top of it, where real investment is made in communications, whatever kind or size of charity you are, and where communications has a voice at the top table of decision making. The it's a luxury myth, uh, or that somehow any one of those aspects of communications is a luxury. None of them are a luxury. How often is it that the communications budget is the first one to get looked at when you're going through difficult times? It's the easy one to cut. It's the luxury one. We can do some, some more of that another time. But why is it that chief executives and financial directors don't recognise that that's a false economy? It might save you some money in the very short term, but actually it's going to affect everything else that you do. Fundraising and service budgets are very rarely cut at the same rate uh, or to the same depth. But if you're not spending money on comms, then your fundraising will suffer. Uh, your service delivery will suffer. The organisation's reputation will suffer. It's not about making a choice between these things. It's about ensuring that communications is at the centre it's the glue, it tells the story, it creates the climate for better fundraising. It creates the climate for more effective service delivery and a better understanding of the service that you deliver to your beneficiaries. It's not a luxury, it's at the heart of everything. Let me show you my new favourite diagram and all of you will know that uh, every idea or concept can be boiled down either to a Venn diagram or a four box chart or a triangle. Well I'm going through a triangle phase at the moment um, so here's my favourite uh, current diagram, uh, which shows uh, what I call the holy trinity of every organisation. Your brand, your strategy and objectives, and your narrative. Now I could talk for hours about brands, one of my favourite subjects. Uh, I also have some favourite definitions of it. Uh, my most favourite definition is the incom incomprehensible one that's used in marketing textbooks, which is the brand is the set of ideas, images and associations that are left in the minds of all of your audiences once your organisation has finished its process of communicating through various channels with those audiences. Or, the real one, which is, it's who you are, it's what you say, it's what you do, and it's what you feel like. And that's your brand. Second, your strategy and objectives, okay? What are you trying to achieve, by when, with whom, and your narrative probably the neglected one of the three. I think organisations are waking up to this. I think perhaps in the past people have merged narrative into the brand book rather than thinking separately about how you talk about the organisation that you are. Um, it's about what you believe, why you do what you do, how you do things, your value system, why you believe what you're doing is right, uh, what your stakeholders, uh, who are your stakeholders and beneficiaries and what it is that you're trying to do for them. What's the science or the evidence on which you base your beliefs and your activities? And there's a long version of that, and there's a short version of that, and if you have a really good one, you can boil it down into a couple of sentences as well. And guess what? You can't do any of those things. You can't promote your brand, you can't deliver your strategy, and you can't tell the organisation's narrative without effective communications. It's the thing that links all of those things together inside and outside the organisation. And leaders that understand this know the value of proper investment in communications. Perhaps even more importantly, those leaders know the value of integrated communication. Now that's not the primary topic of the day, but it is an opportunity for a plug 
uh, for the latest Charity Comms uh, publication on integrated communications, which will be published in hard copy February. in February. Uh, so look out for that. Um, I'm sure it will be published online as well. Um, and that will help you to think about how to integrate communications better in your organisation. And actually, demonstrating the power of integrated communications is perhaps one of the power most powerful ways of making the case for investment. It's only for big charities. Uh, nonsense. Uh, we can't afford it. Nonsense. Uh, maybe next year when we have more money. Nonsense. I could probably stop there, actually, on that slide, but there is a little bit more to say about it. First of all, um, it's not just a, a small charity issue, this. Big charities have uh, difficulties sometimes in convincing their boards and their CEOs to invest. Uh, I can think of one or two very big charities for whom it took years and years to, to invest anything like the right amount of money in, uh, in communications, and only now are they starting to do it. I won't mention them, but you would know them. Size is only really relevant in relative terms. If you're a £5,000 charity or a £50 million charity, proportionally, as a percentage of your spend, you should be looking to spend the same amount of money on communications. That certain avenues of communication may be precluded if you only have a small budget, sure, and the scale of what you can do may be different. But if you know what you're trying to achieve, you know what you need to do with your audiences, what you want them to think, to feel, to do as a result of your communication, then you can achieve crucial outcomes from communication activity. And a £500 investment can be just as valuable to a small charity as a £5 million investment to a big one. Next myth. You can't prove it. That's nonsense too. Um, how many times have you heard these things? Oh, well, you can't measure the impact of communications. Uh, show me the bottom line effect. What's the ROI? It's too difficult to measure. It's hard to be precise. Of course, one of the biggest challenges for all of us in communications is to convince the CEO or the financial director or indeed the board of trustees that the investment is worthwhile. have to prove what the return is. And it's no use just resorting to the, uh, the tried and tested or rather tired, it's hard to put a value on reputation or it's difficult to be precise about mass communication. That may be true, but it doesn't wash when you're trying to make the case. You have to find ways of demonstrating the impact. And good evaluation knowledge, good evaluation skills should be part of the toolbox of every communicator and every communications team. Demonstrating value in a way that the purse string holder and other stakeholders in the organisation can buy into is crucial. And yes, evaluation does cost money. Um, and I'm back to my proportionality thing again. Whatever your budget is, you should be looking to spend up to 10% of that budget on evaluation. Um, it really is worth uh, investing that amount of money. And evaluation isn't just evaluation for its own sake. It's about learning what works, proving what works, so that you can do more and better um, of the most effective work. And evaluation, like the planning and the delivery, should be integrated as well. That's your only hope of showing how one activity impacts and reinforces the other. So what's going to make the difference? Well, uh, lots of things. Uh, some of them I've already referred to. But one thing I think is really important is look at organisations who do get it. I've referred to this a couple of times. I picked out two that just sprang to mind when I was putting the presentation together. There are many more. British Heart Foundation, as a, um, you know, long-established investor in integrated communications. Parkinson's UK is a more recent one, but doing really interesting and effective things. I could mention Macmillan, I could mention Alzheimer's, I could mention a number of people in the room. There are lots of people who really get it. If your uh, CEO and your board is not getting it, look at some of the organisations that are doing it and use those as examples. Even get them, in, get them to come in and talk to your team. Uh, people who know what they're, they're talking about in terms of the impact of communications and use those uh, as direct examples. So finally, what do you need to do? Um, I probably raise more questions than given answers, uh, and that's because I think people following me are going to give you some insights as to how they've made it work in their organisations. But be persistent. This is important. This is at the core of everything. Engage with directors and other teams around the organisation. Identify with them what will make a difference to them. Demonstrate how effective communications will impact on service delivery, will impact on fundraising, will impact on the bottom line. It's like dealing with any audience. You have to understand what are their motivators, what are their drivers, what are their triggers, what are the things you need to do to engage with them. Integrate your communications, demonstrate the impact. The case is strong and it is worth the effort and perhaps most of all, 
continue to focus on demonstrating how good communications will help to deliver the strategy and the objectives, not just to embroider or embellish or tell its story, how it will build and protect the brand and your reputation, and how it will reinforce your organisation's narrative, uh, and tell the engaging stories that will encourage uh, support for communications activity. Communications really isn't a luxury, and today is about finding the right angle for you in your organisation to make the case for proper investment in communications. Thanks very much.